The Mystery Theater presents... Major Wayne, my son-in-law, James Archer, has been missing for three months. His body, or a body like his, was found in the Hudson River. His insurance has been paid over to my daughter Nancy, Mrs. James Archer. Yes, we know all that. You also know that I'm president of a small bank in Terrytown. Can you explain how a substantial deposit is made in my bank each month to my daughter by her husband who is dead and buried our mystery drama, Strange Passenger, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Nat Poland and Bob Caliban. I'll be back shortly with Act One. <laughs> up at the night sky and the moon hanging there and just wondered. Man is finite. He can comprehend anything with definable limits. But beyond such limits is an incomprehensible universe. We increase our knowledge about outer space each year, but what we know is very small. The mystery of life is a secret that still has to be revealed. But one corner of it was lifted for James Archer. Aren't you Archer, Jim Archer? Who are you? A recruiter. I was in court yesterday when you demolished a client of ours. Oh, now, what did you label me? Oh, yes, an obscene slumlord. Uh, it was yesterday. I just wanted to tell you how much I admired your plea for the plaintiff. Thank you. Uh, sit down, if you'd like. You're not expecting anyone, no. Oh. <laughs> just sitting here wondering what to do next. Are you a lawyer? Oh, an obscure one in a big firm. Ah, thanks for coming over. I've been uh, feeling sorry for myself. You must know what happened today. The case was settled out of court. Yeah, it's known as compromise. I call it dishonesty. Well, the slumlord is a rich man. He's agreed to make some restitution for his neglect. Yeah, it's a nice way of saying he paid off someone and the case was settled. He should have gone to jail. I do, yeah. When I found out that my firm had worked out a settlement without first telling me, I resigned. Oh, I see. Our clients, the plaintiffs, got promises. A few months rent-free. Charges will be dropped for willful destruction they'd done in the building. He should have been forced to repair the heating system, exterminate the rats, install sanitary plumbing, make the building fireproof, and pay a stiff fine. Even go to jail as an example to others like him. You really are a crusader, aren't you? Injustice makes me sick. So sick it's put you out of work. That's right. I don't mind. I guess it's unfair to my wife, a little girl. Well, I'm sorry. It's after six. I'd better telephone home and tell my wife the happy news. Uh, one moment, Mr. Archer. Hmm? What would you be willing to do for security, authority, and the opportunity to practice those ideals which you hold so precious? That's not amusing, Mr. Recruiter. No, 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 I mean it. I mean it. What would you do? I'd do anything. Huh? Then I think I can arrange just such a life for you and for your family. <laughs> Come with me. Ah, uh, 
went through town, so you have found a man of integrity. Ah, uh, yes, Cosmo, this is James Archer, a gifted lawyer who believes that law and justice should never be compromised. Is that correct, Mr. Archer? Yes. May I ask where I am? Where we are is unimportant. You came here of your own free will. You are under no obligation to stay. If you say so, we will transport you back to the city. No, no, thank you. At least not until I've heard what this is all about. How can you guarantee me an honest, uncompromising life? Because I represent, in fact, I embody a viewpoint that is both utopian and attainable. <laughs> and what is that? The bloodless establishment on your earth of a society in which each man is equal, in which each earthling will lead a happy life, a society in which certain outstanding men such as you can become will re-establish moral values and strive to relate to life beyond us. Well, that's mumbo-jumbo, but it sounds good. It's not mumbo-jumbo. You say that because you cannot see above the daily scratching and clawing for survival. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cosmo. What do I have to do in order to attain this utopia of yours? Who pays my salary? What about insurance, pension? Oh, details. You will never need to worry about any of them. And while you are away, before you begin your mission, your wife and child will be provided for. My mission? Yes. Soon after it begins, you will rise swiftly. You will become a man of importance locally and statewide and then perhaps in your nation. You will proclaim what you honestly think. No more compromise, no watering down of the law or of justice. Mr. Recruiter. Oh, uh, yes. Are you sure I'm not still in that bar or trying to forget my worries? Oh, I am very sure. The opportunity that has come to you has come to only a few others on Earth. Just who are the two of you? There's something very weird about all this. It seems so because you are earthbound, Mr. Archer. Are you saying... You know, no, that's nonsense. I know that a lot of people report flying objects. And there have been drawings of funny little men with pointed antennae for ears and all sorts of things. <laughs> no rational person gives them a second thought. You don't have to believe, Mr. Archer. You are free to leave. When you arrive home, you will appear to have overstayed your time at that restaurant. And you won't remember a word of what followed after. I can, in fact, right now, blank out the names of your wife and child. <laughs> you mean... Now, wait a minute. Their names are... You... You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Very easily. Ready to quit, Mr. Archer? Uh, no. No? I think I'll see this through. Ah, that is an incredible honor, Mr. Archer. Recruiter, bring in the ship, and we will be on our way. Your father tells me a strange story, Mrs. Archer. Oh, it's worse than strange. It's bizarre. It's over three months now since my husband just... I just vanished. But on the first of each month... I covered that, Anne. That money deposited in the bank the first of each month is what led me to see Major Wayne. What do you make of it, Major? First, uh, Mrs. Archer, tell me again everything you remember from the night your husband didn't come home. Well, he resigned from his job. He he went to a bar near his office and sat down to think over what he'd done. Some acquaintance joined him and then they left. Well, next, the missing persons bureau called to, to have to have me identify a body they'd found in the river. It was dressed in Jim's clothes and I, I guess it was Jim. You thought so too, Dad? Yes, I did. But both of us had misgivings because... Because it, it just made no sense. 
him was as straight as an arrow. He... Well, unless he'd been murdered, we somehow just couldn't believe it. The body was his. No other uh, person in his life? Absolutely not. No, Major. Jim Archer lived for his work and for his family. He was a thoroughly honest man. And the body found in the river had died from a violent stroke as if it had been electrocuted? Anything else, Mrs. Archer? I know about the insurance and the mysterious deposits of money. Tell him, man. Well, there is something else, Major Wayne, but oh, it's, it's so far out. I, I just haven't told anyone except my dad. Well, tell me. The night Jim disappeared, Penny and I were watching the news. Uh, Penny's seven, old enough to read. And all of a sudden, words began to run across the bottom of the screen like, you know, when a, when a bulletin is superimposed over the pictures? Yes. Well, the words were... Don't worry, man. I'm all right. Don't worry. Love him. And those sentences ran across the bottom of the screen. Yes, time after time, half the evening long. I telephoned the TV station, but he thought it was some kind of a nut. Did your daughter see the sentences? No. And uh, she was watching with you and she can read? Yes. I know it sounds incredible, Major Wayne. I have no reason to disbelieve you, Mrs. Archer. Well, what the devil do you make of it? I don't know quite what to say. I don't want to give you hope, but I think that James Archer, voluntarily or by force, has been transported from the Earth to some planet beyond sight and comprehension. Oh, what? come now, Major. You, you mean by, by one of those unidentified flying objects? Yes, that's just what I mean. What? Absurd. Do you mean to tell me our intelligence gives even the slightest credence to that Buck Rogers kind of thing? Mr. Weber, let me give you some facts. As long ago as 1959 in Boinani, New Guinea, a Reverend William B. Gill, his assistants, and the entire student body of his missionary school, about 27 persons, observed a strange object hanging in the sky a few hundred yards away. It was oval-shaped and had a deck on its top, like an observation deck. Gill saw what looked like men and waved to them, and they waved back. Then the object raised up and flew straight off into the sky. There were many remarkable sightings in Michigan in 1966. The UFO craft looked like a huge pie, well-lighted with red, blue, and white lights spinning all around it. There have been sightings in Delaware, Illinois, Tennessee, South Dakota, Mississippi. In fact, almost everywhere. And you think that, that there really is such a thing as an unidentified flying object? There's no question about it. You terrify me, Major Wayne. Yes, it terrifies me too. And you, you think that maybe one of them carried him off? I don't know. It's a possibility. But why Jim? I can't answer that. We have agents in many parts of the country. I'll alert them to Mr. Archer's disappearance. And uh, Mr. Weber. Yeah, yes, Major. I'll need your cooperation. I want to know when those deposits are made and who makes them. If it's a human, I want to ask some questions. Well, Mr. Archer, what do you think? It's magnificent. Beautiful green fields, homes, even light. Incredible. And the people, well, to be honest, they're strange looking to me, but I'm only used to human beings. These people are shorter, round, flat faced, with quite sharp ears. His he's brave, untroubled, and super intelligent. He will soon be free to visit with them. I'm ready now. Soon. Mm, the surgery I have been told was perfect. You now possess a brain as extraordinary as ours. Your face has been altered very skillfully. All that is left of you is the name. Stuart Murdoch. Where did you come from, and what is your mission on the planet Earth? 
I have no remembrance of where I came from or who I was. My mission on Earth is to become a leader of my people and to prepare them for your bloodless conquest of my country. You have been away from Earth for six months. He is ready, recruiter. Oh, yes. Take him among our people for a week, then fly him back. Drop him outside Fargo, North Dakota, supply him with money and return. Yes. And let nothing interfere with those regular deposits of money. It will have to compensate. He now belongs to us. <laughs> fantasy, unidentified flying objects. One researcher wrote that he thought the phenomenon was so far outside the laws of present scientific knowledge that UFOs could be considered ridiculous. But once he was exposed to the hard facts, he concluded that the existence of this unexplainable phenomenon is, and I use his exact word, overwhelming. The strange story of James Archer, the recreated man, will continue in a few moments. And who is to say that what has happened to James Archer is impossible? Dr. Faustus sold his soul to the devil in exchange for 24 years of every pleasure and all knowledge at his command. And James Archer's state of mind has led him in the same direction. It is, remember, six months since Archer vanished, literally into thin air. Excuse me, Mr. Weber. Major Wayne. Not uh, Anything? Anything? I see, and? Well, I'm at the Nygaard Farm about 30 miles northwest of Fargo in a small community named Shawnee Creek. It's uh, pretty desolate. Apple and I put down our two seater in one of Nygaard's fields and tackled it to the side of a big barn. Good. See if a UFO lands and if anyone leaves it. If so, follow the man. Don't pick him up, but don't lose him. I want to learn where he goes. This is fantastic, Major. If I mentioned any part of this this weird conversation to my friends, they'd think I was ready for a mental hospital. Well, you're not, Mr. Weber. It's real enough. Oh, and uh, let me give you a warning. Yes? Let's say that James Archer is returning by a UFO to Earth from wherever he's been. He'll be returning for a purpose, and to achieve that purpose, he won't be the same man. I don't quite understand. If, as I suspect, he was chosen by some power from another planet because he had soured on his life and our civilization, and if that power has some objective on our planet Earth, you can be sure that Archer's been brainwashed and indoctrinated deeply. So, uh, even though he might look the same, he probably won't. We had uh, one experience in which a man who had vanished was brought back into custody. He was not the same man he had been. He'd become a robot. We had to institutionalize him. An exceptionally intelligent man, but dangerous to us. Later, he was found in his room dead. Somehow, he'd been electrocuted. That's why you thought the, the body in the river... Yes, that got me thinking. Now, uh, tell me about those deposits, Mr. Weber. Promptly, the first of the month, a cash deposit of $5,000 is made to the account of my daughter. We alerted our bank security guards, and when the last deposit was made through the night deposit slot, one of the guards spotted the man who dropped it. I have a description of him here. Good. I'll have one of my agents try to spot him and follow him. Then we'll pick him up for questioning. It might be ticklish. We have nothing against the man. I, uh... I may need your daughter's cooperation. Major, I... I don't want to expose her to danger. I don't think there'll be any, but uh, we'll be careful. 
I'm very aware that you've already lost a son-in-law. Jim Archer was a fine young man. Hello? Who is it? Oh. Hello. Don't be afraid. Come up to the front of the church. I'm Reverend David Hold, the minister. I, uh... I apologize for entering. Never apologize for entering a house of God. Who who are you, young man? Stuart Murdoch. Not from around here, are you? No. Can I do something for you? Well, I didn't enter to uh, to do any damage, Mr. Holt. I should hope not. We don't have vandals out here on the prairie. Are you lost? Am I near Fargo? About 30 miles by the state highway. Do you have a car? No, but if you'll point me in the right direction. Glad to, but uh, you won't find much traffic at this time of night. Uh, I take it you're hitchhiking. Unless there's someone around here who'd drive me to the airport. I have money. There's something on your mind, Mr. Murdoch. Uh, anything I can do to help? Oh, no, I'm fine. Have you, uh, have you been in the church for... No, 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 you just walked in, am I right? Yes, a minute ago. And before that, you were outside? Yes, yes. Now, if you'll show me the way to... Of course, of course, all in good time, Mr. Murdoch. May I ask you a question? Did you see what I saw, and is that why you come here? What did you see? A saucer-shaped thing hovering in the sky and then coming close to the ground, not far from old Neil's Nygaard Farm, half a mile from here. What do they call um, an unidentified flying object? And you think you saw such a thing? I know I saw it. I'll be going along. Others saw it, too. I came to my church to pray to God to protect all of us. From what? Satan. Reverend Hoad, there is no such thing as Satan. It is in a man's self that he is good or evil. Young man, I believe in God, and he sustains me. And in believing in him, I accept Satan as a fact. A fact of what? He was cast out of heaven and is the chief monarch of hell. Of hell, which is? Many things, Mr. Murdoch. Satan corrupts mankind. The struggle to possess a soul for good or for evil goes on in a man forever. The presence of God within you cannot be extirpated. Then I don't have anything to worry about. The day will come, I assure you, when you will feel his presence. And he will help you to decide what is right. Okay, if you say so. You have been infected, haven't you? Odd you didn't see that unidentified flying object. Oh, I saw it. The fact is, I had a ride in it. You know something? You just may have it there. Well, thank you, Reverend Hode. He's the man we want. Well, tell me about him, Mr. Thompson. Uh, you are an intelligence agent? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Here's my identification. Oh, uh, who is this Mr. Murdoch? Uh, he's a New York lawyer named Archer who vanished six months ago. Uh, you may not believe in such things as UFO. Oh, but I do, yes. I saw the thing laying less than a mile away. Uh, what's this uh, Murdoch up to? Uh, we don't know, Reverend, but... Major Wayne thinks Murdoch sold himself to some power in outer space and has been returned to Earth to carry out some mission. To what end, Mr. Thompson? Oh, we don't know that. I, I just saw him go into your church, and my orders were just to follow him. He's headed for Fargo in New York. All right, then, Appleton, I'll fly to the airport there and wait for Murdoch to board a plane. We'll board the same one for New York. I wish you well. Murdoch is a personable young man. If some force by which we are ignorant has 
possessed him. Don't despair. The God-given more force within each of us will be stronger than the power of Satan. Given time, Mr. Murdoch will reject having sold his soul. And then what? Heaven alone knows. He comes in here almost every day after work. I'm terribly nervous, Major. Not uh, Major, Mrs. Archer. I'm just plain Bill Wayne, your accountant, and you're Nancy. You got that straight? Yes, of course. Uh, Bill? It's a quarter to six. He ought to be along any... Uh Uh-oh. That's the man. He's taking a seat in that booth. You know what to do. Yes. Wish me luck. Who 
Who are they? From what place in outer space do they come? What are they? And are they friends or enemies? From what we have heard, James Archer's mission is to become a preeminent person in our society. He is to prepare us for a bloodless overthrow of the several ways of life represented on our planet. Why? I'll be back with Act Three shortly. In any contest, it is wise never to underestimate the strength of the enemy. But what do we do when confronted by an incomprehensible force, one beyond finite understanding? Major Wayne of Intelligence knows what has been going on, but what can he do about it? We have never captured an unidentified flying object, and we only have reports that they have been seen at a distance. Six months have now elapsed, and it is a year since James Archer disappeared. The deposit was made as usual. Well, why can't Major Wayne force that... Mr. Recruiter, to tell him where the money comes from. There's no law, Nan, to prevent a man from dropping money for you in the night slot at the bank. He's not committing a crime. One of these days, Recruiter will be seen with Jim, and then Wayne moves in. Well, about the only person Recruiter sees is that man who's become assistant to the special prosecutor. What's his name? Uh, uh, Murdoch? Yes. Stuart Murdoch. Yes. Yeah. A remarkable young man. Brilliant lawyer and great presence. He'll go far. He's a leader, and we haven't got many of them around these days. If I live long enough, I think I'll see Murdoch governor. He's an unusual man. So is Jim. Yes, I agree, Nancy. I was proud to have him as my son-in-law. You know, if you think about it soberly, Dad, both of us are not all there in the state department. Who could believe that Jim might be alive in outer space? A year ago, I would have laughed at the idea. Now, I don't know. We have to rely on Major Wayne. Well, I'm not going to much longer. Which is, what do you mean by that? I'm moving into the city. What? Sell your home? Take Penny out of school? Oh, let's face it. I'm still young and alive. I want to be with people among them. I'll find a job and Penny can go to private school. Jim is dead. Penny and I are alive. And we need to rip this this shroud off from over us. Happy to meet you, Reverend Hode. Uh, you remember Thompson? I uh, sure do. It's uh, nice of you to have invited me to New York, my first visit. Uh, it's an impressive sight. So how are you, Mr. Thompson? I just want to thank you. Are you still keeping an eye on a visitor from space? You, uh, you think that, Reverend Hode? Well, I suspect it. Uh, let me put it that way. That, uh, that was an unusual experience for me. That young man just appearing in my church, uh, Stuart Murdoch. Yes, I've been following his career. He's what you brought me here to talk about, isn't it, Major? Yes. Uh, you've met him and uh, you've talked with him. And I'm sorry for him. He's getting what he set out to achieve, but Stuart Murdoch, whether or not he was put down from a spaceship as a soul possessed. Well, uh, tell me, what, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to give a small party. Thompson, arrange it with the hotel. Ah, uh, Major, you want me to invite the guests? No, uh, you invite Mrs. Archer. She's a little uh, cool toward me these days, and uh, I'll invite her father. No, 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 you invite both of them. Just tell them that uh, if you want them to meet a friend of yours from North Dakota who may have something to say that will be of interest to them. Mrs. Archer. Oh, yes, yes. We think there's a chance that Stuart Murdoch is the former James Archer. Nancy Archer is the presumed widow. 
the other person you'll meet will be Hugo Weber, her father. And I'll be there as Bill Wayne, Mrs. Archer's accountant. So uh, there'll be five of us. I should be most happy to help you if I can. Well, look who's up. I, uh, I'm troubled, Cosmo. Why? Uh, Mr. Murdoch is everything we expected him to be. Oh, that's true. He's risen rapidly and he has already become a public figure. But I'm troubled about him. When I dropped him in North Dakota, it seems that he wandered into a church and he met the minister there, the Reverend David Hold, who filled him with talk about Satan, soul, God, and conscience. Murdoch couldn't have been affected by that nonsense. No, but Murdoch remembers Hold and often brings up his name. The man made an impression on Murdoch. And you find that to be a distraction? When Murdoch was transformed and brainwashed, was all of his conscience removed? I assume so. That is what the report indicated. Do you suspect that he has some vestige of conscience left? I don't know. But the thought troubles me. <laughs> Let's hope it all goes well. Now, Mrs. Arch and the others should be right along. Hello, Mr. Hode. I'm so glad you could stop in to see me, Mr. Mudd. Oh, thank you. Uh, meet Joe Thompson, a member of my church back home. Joe, is this uh, Stuart Murdoch? Oh, I do. How do, you do? Uh, sit down, Mr. Murdoch. We have a uh, tea or whatever else you'd like. Tea, please. Oh, good. I... I don't try to impose my taste on others. <laughs> I thought that was your job, Reverend, shoving your convictions down the throats of others. No, no, not not shoving, young man. I, I expose my convictions to them, and uh, then it's up to the individual to accept or to reject the truth. The truth, as you see it. It's the word of God, which is the truth. Uh, I'm just one of his messengers, uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to see you while I was in New York. You're my messenger from God? Yes, I do believe I am. I, I knew that when you wandered into my church in Shoshone that... Uh, well, remember when we talked? Uh, you, you remember, of course. Every word of your mumbo-jumbo, Reverend. You said that the presence of God within each person cannot be extirpated. Uh, here's your tea, Mr. Mother. Thank you. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid you were wrong, Reverend. I'm unchanged. I haven't had to whistle for God's help. I've helped myself. And as you may know, I've been very successful. But uh, you're here, Mr. Murdoch. You didn't forget me? Of course not. I liked you when we met. And I'm happy to see you again. Well, that should be the others, Reverend Hood. All other men, uh, friends of... Neighbors back in Shoshone. You don't mind, do you? No, no, certainly not. Mr. Weber, Mrs. Archer, I'm so glad you could stop in. Uh, this is uh, Stuart Murdoch, the man I was telling you about. Uh, hello, Mr. Murdoch. I'm happy to meet you. My father, Mr. Weber. How do you do? And uh, Bill Wayne, uh, a friend. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Uh, Joe, uh, a tea fall. It's a uh, real honor meeting you, Mr. Murdoch. Well, thank you. We've been following your career, Nancy and me, and uh, I must say we like the way you've ripped into corruption and graft. The public is entitled to honesty in government. Well, that's what they all say, but uh, you seem to mean it. And my actions, I hope, prove it. My, uh, my late husband felt that way, too. I mean, about honesty. Yes, Jim Archer was an honest man. All that got him was his resignation from his job. He couldn't stand hypocrisy. He wouldn't compromise. I can't either. But I've learned that that one has to prepare others slowly for the truth. And not your version of truth, Reverend. Truth is invisible, young man. The truth I preach is God's word. Truth is an ideal, and it is divine. Well, uh, I think that's foolish. Truth, like any other commodity, has to be sold. 
If you'll excuse me, I do have to be going. I'm happy to have met all of you. And Reverend Hode, do pay New York another visit. I can find my way out, Mr. Thompson. Well, Mrs. Archer? No, Major. Stuart Murdoch isn't Jim Archer transformed in space and returned to Earth. What is it? The very idea. It's absurd. An obscure minister from North Dakota has created wonder in your mind. He insinuates the thought of God and conscience into your mind, even though you know, as we know, that both are fixed. You still are earthbound. Well, Mr. Murdoch, we seem to have failed. It has happened before, but not often. I can offer you a choice. A return to our planet for a short time, and then resume your mission on Earth, or remain here now. I... I don't know what to do. Why can't we go on as we have been? I'll carry out the mission. I'm afraid that's no good, Mr. Murdoch. The very fact that you wonder if he's been infected with Satan's moral virus, whatever that might be, creates a doubt about your reliability. Order the ship. Are you, uh, taking me back into space, Cosmo? No. You will remain here. You will be returned to what you would have become after you resigned from your job and before you accepted recruiter's offer. <laughs> and what would that be? Still an unemployed lawyer? That will be for others to discover. <laughs> Open the door, Thompson. Follow me. Have your gun ready. Yes, sir. The house feels empty. There's a light at the end of it. Look, Look over there, sir. In a chair. Good Lord. Why, that's... That's James Archer. I know from pictures of him, it's, it's asleep. Yeah, or drugged. His hair has turned gray, and uh, look at his face. Worn and haggard. He, he looks like a drunk sleeping it off. Archer. Arch. What is this, Major? His, his hands as cold as ice. So, as Cosmo said, James Archer was returned as what he would have become after he lost his job and tried to sell his soul to a force from outer space. Had Cosmo read the future, it would appear so. It is very possible that James Archer was so depressed with his future that he allowed himself to deteriorate into the condition in which he was found. I will return shortly. Frustration leads some of us in dangerous directions. For most of us, however, hope extends a hand to lift us up from despair. James Archer never grasped that hope. He angrily preferred the path that led him to become the instrument of a force from another planet whose goal is the bloodless conquest of Earth, not by invasion, but by indoctrination. He saved his soul, even though it cost him his life. Our cast included Nat Poland, Bob Caliban, Evie Juster, Ian Martin, and Frank Behrens. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.